We sense light with our eyes every day, but do you know what it actually is? What it's actually made of? Greek philosophers thought that light was produced in the eye, reflected off of objects, and then came back. Since then, we've come up with some better theories. You've probably heard cool science words like photon and wavelength used to describe light. And you've also experienced some of the ways that light behaves, how it reflects off of mirrors or refracts through water and glass. Refraction is one property of light that you might be familiar with. A rainbow is one example. When white light passes through a transparent material like a prism, the different colors can be refracted or bent by a different amount. Refraction also causes a straw to appear bent in a glass of water. The water and glass are acting like a lens, which changes the path of the light rays as they travel to your eye. What is light that makes it behave in these ways? Two popular ideas is that light is either a wave, like a water wave, or a particle, like a marble. The famous Isaac Newton thought that light had to be a particle because waves were known to bend around obstacles while light to the eye appeared to travel only in straight lines. But what if Isaac Newton didn't have all the information? Is there a way that we can see light bending around objects? You can do an experiment to discover another uncommonly observed property of light that was used to prove that light is in fact a wave. So let's build it. Safety speech before we get started. This experiment involves lasers, and lasers can be dangerous. Don't look at it, don't point it at anybody, don't shine it on any reflective surfaces, because laser light can damage your eyes permanently, and it can even cause blindness. So be careful. In order to observe this property of light, we're going to need something really small, like a human hair. We need to get the hair into the path of the laser, and you're going to use your index card to do that. So first, use some tape to make sure that your laser stays on. So just tape over the button. This sponge is just used as a support. You could use anything like a book or a deck of cards to give your laser a little height. Fold your card in half and place it in front of the laser to see where it hits. Mark that spot with a marker, and then cut a little window into your card. Now you need to tape your hair across that gap. Make sure that you get the hair to be straight and pretty tight. Now that you have your hair taped to the card, we can set up the actual experiment. Move your laser about one and a half meters from the surface that you're using. Take your hair and place it close to the laser so that the laser hits the hair. And don't forget to turn off the lights. What do you see on your screen? What's happening here is that the light hits the edges of the hair, and because it acts like a wave as it travels, light bends around the hair. The reason we see bright and dark stripes is because when the light bends, it starts to overlap or interfere with itself. Where we have bright lines, the light interferes constructively, or adds together, and where we have dark lines, the light interferes destructively, meaning it cancels out. This interaction we are observing is called diffraction, which is when light bends around obstacles. You can't normally see this because most everyday light sources and objects are too big. Researchers can use this phenomenon to study really small obstacles, like atoms in a crystal. And you can do this too. With a couple measurements and a little math, this diffraction pattern can tell us the diameter of your hair. Use a marker to mark the center of the dark spots on one side of the diffraction pattern. You're going to mark several spots so that we can average the distances between them to get a more accurate measurement. To find the diameter of your hair, we need to measure three things. First, lambda is the wavelength of your laser light. And so this should be listed on your laser. Um, if it's not, you can use 650 nanometers for red, or 525 nanometers for green. The next thing that we need is capital D, and this is the distance between your screen and the card. I'm just going to say that this should be about 
150 centimeters. And finally, we need to find x, the distance between two of the dots on your card. And so, to get a more accurate measure, first measure the distance between the first dot and the last dot. I'll call that L. And then you're going to divide by the number of spaces that you have. So here, x is going to be L divided by spaces. When I did this experiment, L was 4.2 centimeters. We're going to divide by four spaces because I had five dots. And so the distance between two spaces is about 1.05 centimeters. Now we can put all this together to find the diameter of your hair. And so the diameter, little d, is going to be the wavelength times the distance to the screen divided by the distance between two dots. Your centimeters are going to cancel out, and your answer is going to be in nanometers. And my hair was about 92,857 nanometers. But this isn't a very convenient unit to use to measure the diameter of a hair. And so we can divide by 1,000 to convert it to micrometers. So this is going to be 900 or 92. 0.857 micrometers. And most human hairs are going to be between about 20 micrometers and 200 micrometers. So what was your diameter? How cool was that? You can't measure your hair with just a ruler, but using the wave properties of light, now you can. I challenge you to figure out which of your family members, friends, or even pets has the thinnest and thickest hair. So maybe now you're thinking, Alan, so what if we see a bunch of lines? That, that doesn't prove that light is a wave. But there is another wave that you're familiar with where we can see diffraction happening. How about water waves? Here we have a flat, calm pool of water, and there's a barrier in the middle, just like your hair was a barrier for the light. We're also projecting the pool onto a screen so that it is easier to see. You can see a plane wave travel to the barrier, and the barrier is going to diffract the water waves in the same way your hair diffracted light. On the right side of the barrier, the waves are curved and have bent around the edges. Downstream, you can faintly see them overlapping and interfering. This is exactly the same as what happens with light because light also behaves like a wave. You can see a diffraction pattern with a lot of different objects, although most aren't going to work as well as your hair. But if you use the eye of a needle, the teeth of a comb, or a thread, any thin object, you might be able to get a diffraction pattern. So find some objects and try them out for yourself, and how does the pattern look different from the one you got with your hair? So it turns out that Newton didn't have all the information. We now know that light behaves sometimes like a wave and sometimes like a particle, and this is called the wave-particle duality, but that's an explanation for a different time. I hope you had fun with our lasers by a hair experiment. This is physics. Thanks for watching. This is Saturday Morning Astrophysics at Purdue. Please subscribe to discover more interesting physics topics.